Well, let's bring you a quick bit of breaking news, shall we? And we're hearing that Fernandinho has signed a contract extension. You might remember he was out of contract, uh, and he has signed a contract extension for another year uh, at Manchester City. He will be 37 when that contract expires. So uh, Fernandinho uh, signing that contract extension. Um, we'll ask our next guest about that, I should think, and a whole lot more, because I'm delighted to say that Jolly and Lescott uh, joins us right now uh, on the Euro Football Show. Uh, very good morning to you, Jolly, and there's plenty of news breaking uh, all around me at the moment. What do you make of that Fernandinho news? Yeah, morning. Um, yeah, great, great acquisition there to the squad. We know what he does on the pitch, but I know how how vital he is to the squad in terms of the, um, his professionalism. He's a great guy to be around. He's someone that the players admire and respect. So that just makes so much sense for me that, that he signed. I know he enjoys living around here. His, his family has settled, but also for the club and, and his group of players. 37 years young in his case, I should think. I he's, he's, still, he's still got uh, energy in his legs. He's still got all the skill uh, and he's got a vast amount of experience. It shows that sometimes age doesn't matter, does it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I wish I could perform at that level at, at 35, never mind 37. But yeah, he's, as I say, he's vital to the squad for so many reasons in the club. And he's someone that's fitted in straight away. Uh, when he arrived, you could see what he was bringing in terms of experience. He, he won trophies um, in Ukraine. So he just continued with that momentum. Maybe there's hope for both of us yet, Julian. <laughs> um, maybe not so in my case. Um, oh my. Well, I can always dream. <laughs> OK, let's get to England, shall we? OK, uh, we're, we're hearing uh, news that Gareth Southgate, considering that three at the back, um, England yet to con concede. What, what, what is the thinking here? Do, do you understand why he would consider that, debate that, look at that? Yeah, definitely. Um, there's obviously a lot of respect for Germany um, and to match them up man for man. That also means and feels that he believes that man for man, his players are better. Um, and there's no evidence to suggest that, that we're not and, and the England squad aren't better than Germany. So I understand it. I would have liked to, to see the 4-3-3 three, three that we've been playing because then it suggests that we believe the way we play is better than, than them. Um, so I don't think there's any many wrong decisions, any wrong selection processes. Um, but yeah, who knows? We've all tried to speculate and predict what Gareth will play formation-wise and personnel. And I don't think anyone's played right so far. Yeah, well, as a defender, I mean, if some players in the squad have played that at club level. Um, they would have uh, they would have trained and, 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 you know, done patterns of play and, and all of that in training. But taking training with a different group of players onto the pitch, how big a thing is that? Yeah, it's difficult. It, it's more obviously intense in the, in the game environment. And we've seen teams and nations change their their formation recently uh, over the previous couple of days. And it hasn't worked. But again, this is not a, a new formation. Um, like we just spoke about then, it's, this was played in the World Cup and we had a lot of success playing this formation. So it's not totally new. There's a lot of players that have played in this formation and, and the system and the roles they're going to have to, to have in this team. Um, they will be experiencing that. So again, it, it's it's not a, 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 too much of a surprise if he goes with that. Um, again, there's a lot of respect for Germany and, and the way they've played. Yeah, it's 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 tricky being an international manager. If if it goes well and you, and you do that, you're the greatest thing, aren't you? But if you Didier Deschamps and do it, uh, when you pick up the newspapers this morning, which is exactly what the French did last night, it didn't go too well, did it? Exactly that. Um, again, you've you seen in the second half when they went to their their tried and trusted formation, even with the, a different selection of personnel, you could see that the cohesion between the players and the rhythm they had. Um, I hope that isn't the case for England. I'm sure they have a more understanding. Like I said, we've played this formation if it is selected before um, the players are comfortable in that and and the personality they'll be picking are, are used to, to the roles and the, the requirements. Yeah, you, you've been in this situation as a player, haven't you? Preparing for the knockout stages of a tournament. Does it feel different in the camp? What happens to the preparations? Do they change at this stage? Yeah, slightly. Um, obviously, the pressure builds as you get closer um, and you know the consequences are far greater if you lose this game. Um, and in terms of preparation, is a slight tweak. Potentially, 
fluid and food intake because you know you could be going to extra time and and adrenaline can wear out um but again the, the players will be prepared um for this game they'll they'll play it through their minds and play every occasion and situation and be like, and, and try to to mentally prepare but physically they'll be ready um this is arguably the biggest game of some of their careers and lives and you never know when this is going to happen again so i'm sure they're all itching to play and start and, and perform it can be so final, can't it? Do, do, when you leave, say, for the England players now, uh, St George's Park, make your way down to, to London to the team hotel, do you, do you allow yourself to recognise that actually that might be it? You might not go back there. This, this might be the end of the road. Or do you banish those thoughts? Yeah, you don't banish, um, you banish the negativity thoughts. Yes, you, you know this is a massive game, um, but you don't tend to dwell on th that kind of negativity. Yes, there is a possibility you can lose the game, but... You only have positive thoughts because a lot of these players have played in, in games and occasions like this. Um, so you try to remember the, the positives from them occasions and, and use them experience going forward. The side you were involved in lost to Italy 2012 on penalties. Given it's Germany, there's a sense, I should think, amongst <laughs> some England fans that it's an inevitability <clears throat> it will go to penalties. So what about practising? Can you practise penalties? And, and it, how impossible is it to recreate a sort of match knockout tournament situation? Yeah, you definitely practice the penalties, the execution. Um, and that'll be the easy part for the players because technically they're all very accomplished, very good. Um, so that won't be the hard part. The, the thing that you potentially struggle with, um, or you do struggle with, and the thing that would be the most daunting for me um, is the walk up, um, walking up to. Mm to the penalty spot from the halfway line. Um, that would be the, the, the meet that you can't prepare for because you don't know emotionally how the game has done for you before you step up to that to that walk. Um, and also the reaction of the crowd, what the situation is, how, have we missed the previous penalty? Um, that's the bit that would, for me would be the hardest um, and the thing that you probably can't prepare for. Yeah, uh, I heard one player describe to me once as you put a plank on the ground and you can walk along it easily. Put that plank 200 foot up in the air. It's the same plank. It's the same walk. It doesn't feel the same, though, when, when you do that walk. <laughs> yeah, definitely. As I said, the consequences, you know, you, especially if, if, you, if you go back to last night and Beppe knew the outcome if he missed that penalty. But as I said, that's one thing you cannot prepare for is that walk, the emotion, the adrenaline, um, the, the occasion. The technique is, is the easy part, as I said, for these players. They're all technically... Um, good. They will practice that and in training you, you walk is probably 10, 12 yards up, up to the ball from the edge of the box. Um, I'm sure they would have tried to emulate the, the occasion by walking from the halfway line just to gather your thoughts and to see kind of what it's going to mean to you and what you're going to what does go through your head. Um, but again, that is it's totally different, especially at Wembley. Um, it's alright doing that on the training ground. I've, I've played with and works with a lot of players that are great on the training ground, but then you get to the game, it doesn't quite work. But um, I'm sure the players are not thinking about penalties. They're trying to, to get this done in 90 minutes, uh, 120 if possible. Um, and there's no reason why we can't. Uh, let, let's talk about some of the personnel that could be out there. Um, let's start with Phil Foden, shall we? There's talk of him being lined for a recall. If, if he was to go three at the back, five with the wing backs, would you agree with that selection? Where do you put him? Again, I don't think there's there's any bad selections. Yes, Phil could come back in and I don't think anyone would question it. Um, I think before he went off in the Scotland game, he was one of the most exciting players and and there was question marks over why he came up for them him not to start against Czech and and again going into that game no one no one's predicted Saka was gonna start. It was all talk about Sancho. Saka come in and gave him another match performance, so I'm sure Gareth is able to call upon anyone, uh, any of the individuals in the squad he believes and trusts them. Um, but regards to Phil, I think if you're going into these games, you, you probably look at the defining factors and details, and that's big game experience. And it didn't go so well for, for the Man City in the Champions League final, but having played that game, you, you gain experience from that. So the occasion may not um, overcome him, overwhelm him as much as other players. But again, in terms of quality, um, there's, a, there's a lot of quality in that squad, so I don't think anyone will let Gareth or the nation down. 
What about Mason Mount? Obviously well known. He's been self-isolating alongside Ben Chilwell. Um, psychologically, physically, would he be prepared uh, for this game? Would, would you be uh, easy with throwing him back in or would you feel a little discomfort? Um, again, either or, there's not a bad decision. With him coming back in, he's missed a game or, um, and a week's training, similar to, say, Phil Foden and, and some others. Um, psychologically, I don't think him or Ben Chilwell will, will be faced. Um, they played recently and won the Champions League final, uh, arguably the biggest club game in the world. So, it's for them, psychologically, going into this game, they'll be ready physically. Ben maybe not be as close, having that been his last game a few weeks ago. Uh, but got with Mason Mount, um, I think it's all well documented how intelligent he is, how easy he adapts to different styles, tactics. So him coming back into the team um, would not be a hindrance. Um, and again, as an opposition, you look at him and, and recognise the talents he has. You, you would prefer for him not to play if, if he was part of the German team. Yeah. We, we, we've looked at some of the personnel, we've looked at some of the tactics, we've talked about the nerves, we've talked about penalties. OK, uh, put that all together in your mixing pot and uh, give it a stir and, and what do you come up with? It was well, a nice cup of tea as well. Uh, <laughs> well where's mine, Julian? I mean, really, uh, really. It's on the way, it's um, on the way. <laughs> <laughs> OK, good, good. Thanks. Um, <laughs> put, put that all together. What do you come up with? What happens tonight? Um, I come up with a victory, to be honest. Um, I, th I think we perform better against better teams, teams that want to win rather than tr sit up not to lose in the greatest respect to the teams we've faced. Um, I think the more open the team is and, um, and the game, I think that's better for our players. Um, I think they're, they're able to express themselves more. So I see a victory, um, hopefully another clean sheet and just build, build confidence, momentum and fear into the opposition going forward. But um, I'll, I'll, I realistically, I see 2-1 England, but I'll take 2-0 all day.